Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, race number eight at Gulfstream Park on Saturday is the grade three My Charmer Stakes for fillies and mares. Let's take a peek at this field. They are going one mile on the turf. We are expecting a field of nine. And the number five on Leave Mike is the seven to five morning line favorite for Suge McGahee, Arad Ortiz. I don't know. I was really <laughs> expecting a big season this year from on leave yep. after she won the Sands Point, ran pretty well in the QE2 as a three-year-old yep. filly. And I guess I'm just a very difficult judge. I'm somewhat disappointed despite the fact that she's a multiple stakes winner in 2017 and just ran a good third against graded horses at Del Mar. Yeah, I don't think that you're that wrong either. I sort of look at her the same way. I was. I thought that she might actually have a really big four-year-old year, and as it turns out, she's just had sort of an okay four-year-old year, but she's still pretty good. And it's... You know, when you start going through this field one to nine, it's pretty hard to argue that she hasn't found a really nice spot here. I thought she ran really well in the Goldacova last time I did out. Too. I think if Arad had a chance to do it all over again, he would have gotten more forward in that race. He ended up kind of buried down on the inside. Kitten's Roar was in the pocket. Thundering Sky was in the Meadowlands three hole, and yep. On Leave was on behind them. And by the time On Leave got clear, she really was rolling in the stretch and galloped out past everybody. It was a good performance, but at least looking back on her past performances, we know that she can be closer to the pace. Yeah, I agree with you. I feel like in a lot of ways in that goal of the COVID, not that she ran poorly at all, just a little bit unlucky. Yeah. And I don't think I did anything wrong either. Maybe he did take her back a little bit too much. Or he did really rate her at the start of that race. And then once he got in that position, could never get to the outside through the turn. She got held up a little bit. She really did finish well in there. I feel like if she runs that race back, she's probably going to beat this field. Our My Charmer Stakes preview is presented by DRF Bets. If you're betting this nice Saturday Gulfstream card from home or any track across the country, $300 bonus waiting for you at drf.com forward slash fall when you use the promo code FALL300. On Leave was far behind in the Grade 2 Gold Dakota. When you think about the pace for this race, however, I think Time Form US and I are going to disagree as we throw up the pace projector for the Grade 3 My Charmer. They have On Leave sort of an impact. Yeah. I think she can be closer. I they do have the one April gaze on the lead, and the blue bar indicates that our friends at Time Form US believe that this race and this pace will be slow and that the race will favor horses on the lead. The question is, is April gaze good enough to pull off a 20 to 1 shocker? I, um, I guess if she she runs in this race, then yeah, I guess she could make the lead in here. Um, I don't see why that they would run her, why they would run her back on turf again. I mean, they've run around it three times. She hasn't run well on turf at all. She seems to me like a much better dirt horse going shorter. Um, I don't know. Even if she is in this race and makes the lead, I don't see why anybody would really care if she was up there. If I was a horse like on leave and I was going to be rating again, I'd be way more concerned about a horse like the eight Gianna's Dream. If you don't respect uh, the number one in here, the eight Gianna's Dream we're going to get to in a minute certainly plays, but also the nine Defiant Honor if you believe the Time Form U.S. pace projector, because if Defiant Honor gets the trip that Time Form U.S. believes, where she's sitting second off this long yeah. shot, there's a very good chance that she could inherit this turning into the stretch. And although she really didn't fire last time yeah. out in the Valley View, and you can make an argument that she's a bit inconsistent, and Valley View has come back real live with three next out winners. Yeah, it really has, except the, the problem is she just didn't run well in that race. She got a really good trip sitting right up on the lead outside of I'm Betty G, the horse that finished third in there. Really was no match for that horse. Got out, finished through the stretch in there. And at the end of the day, Dan, she just really, she was pretty good at three. She just never really turned out to be as good as I thought she was certainly going to be. I mean, in this race, if On Leave shows up with her good race, how is Defiant Honor going to beat her? She has to really improve to beat that horse. I think you can argue that she wouldn't be the first horse in the world that just didn't handle the Keeneland turf course in that valley. Sure Maybe enough. she didn't like it. The Sands Point, she was overmatched against the likes of Uni and that, and that, that distance. I think she's a stone-cold miler, and I think she's going to yeah. get a chance. I don't think she gets close to that 10 to 1 morning line, yeah. but if she does, you can certainly make the argue that she's value at that price. Let's talk about a sharp horse stepping up in class, and that's the number two Southern Gem going out for trainer Sidatard. This horse won a one-turn nine furlong race at Woodbine over good turf last time out. But we do have a limited positive fact for the underrated trainer, yeah. three for eight over the past three years with last out winners making the third start after a layoff of 45 days or greater on the turf. That last race was good. I think she's going to work out a really nice trip in yeah. the pocket here. I'm just not sure she's good enough to take down on leave if on leave fires. I don't think so either. She got a really nice trip and ride in that race last time. It really worked out well for her, and she got it done. She gets Castellano here. She'll probably get another good trip from the inside. I like her trainer a lot. I know that Maker and Pletcher have had this horse in the past, but I really do like her trainer now, the, the one that she has now. 
Um, I just don't think she's even close to good enough to win this race. You and I both believe that the seven Stormy Victoria is a talented horse. She is graded stakes placed in her career. Yep. But the problem with Stormy Victoria is it seems like there's a very narrow distance range in which she excels, sort of six furlongs, seven, seven and a half. Now we're getting out to the mile and that could be problematic. Yeah, that's really the only thing that I don't like about her in this race. If you asked me who the best horse in the race was, um, all other things taken out of consideration, I would say it might be her. She's really talented. I just don't think she wants to go a two-turn mile. Gianna's Dream, the number eight, who we talked about briefly uh, before, is, is three out of her last four for Michael Maker. And I think Tyler Gaffalione is going to be real aggressive going out of the gate. Get that spot outside the eight. Deny Johnny V that spot with yeah. Defiant Honor or make Defiant Honor work going into the first turn. And again, that's a coveted spot in this race, sitting second off of the speed. She's sharp right now. Her best race, is it good enough to win? It's not right now. She has to improve again to win, but I do agree with you. I think that they will get forward with her in here, and a trip could go a long way um, in her favor here to at least get a big piece of this purse. You know, she's just another one of those, you know, had never run on dirt before. Of course, Mike Maker claims her, puts her right on turf. She's six for 10 now on the grass, a couple of stakes, grade three place. I think she gets the right trip in this race, and I'm going to use her somewhere. Jody Zanimo occasionally runs a good one, and although I didn't love the field she was in against last time out when third and an optional claimer, it was at Gulfstream West. She really makes right. her hay at Gulfstream Park. She's four for nine here, one for 11 everywhere else. She does have a versatile running style. She can adapt to the pace. But I just wonder, I wasn't sure if the real sharp Jody's Animo could beat this field, and maybe no. she's a, a little bit away from that form. Probably. I mean, she's just lost me. I, You know, back in the day when Chad was training this horse, to me, he Chad had gotten her really good. Um, right up until the time that he lost her, this filly was getting really good, and I was very interested to see what would happen with her as she turned into an older horse. And as it turns out, I don't think she's carried that form forward at all. She's one for 12 since she left Chad's barn. Um, I, I wanted to see her really keep that good form going. I don't think she's done it. Inside out, finish behind Jody Zanimo in a beaten favorite at Gulfstream West, but it was her first start off a fairly yeah. sizable layup. My main issue, despite the class concern, is that she is a one-run closer right. that might not get enough pace yeah, for the She needs a real pace to set up uh, for her, and even if she gets that, I don't know that she's good enough to take advantage of it. Pancake is getting back to a preferred surface for Stanley Gold, but she is a deserving long shot, yeah. and her best buyer speed figure is only an E2. Right. She's a she's actually a pretty solid racer. She's not a great at stakes quality racehorse. Let's take a look at our picks for race number eight, the grade three My Charmer Stakes. Not a lot of value for us. The five on leave we just think is the best horse. We liked her last race in the Goldacova. I think she gets through this. Yeah, I do too. I just don't like the alternatives. Again, you know, to me, the only other horse, the horse that I think has the best chance to beat her is Stormy Victoria. To hate the goes, I just don't like her. This, I think she's a sprinter. Mike's going with the five on leave. I'm going to go five, seven, and nine in the grade three, my charmer. And again, if you are betting this weekend from home, no better place than DRF bets. You access a $300 bonus when you sign up at drf.com forward slash fall with the promo code fall 300 and approximate post time for the my charmer kicking off the 50 cent late pick for 335 Eastern. Good luck.